the question is uh, out of Stephen Hawking's book about parallel worlds and, and black holes and stuff, how can these physical oddities or, or anomalies be related to what I'm talking about? Well, first of all, we don't know what a black hole is. Uh, a black hole has at the center of it a singularity. The definition of singularity is you don't know what it is. Uh, this is a fishy way of making theories, by the way. Uh, Stephen Hawking is a prime example. At one point in his career, he was very keen for what were called mini black holes. And these were black holes that were uh, under a centimeter in size. And a certain reading of his theory required 10 high 16 of these things in the universe. Well, when you realize that there's a singularity at the center of each one of them, you say, well, hell, what kind of physics are you doing if you have a physical theory that has 10 high 16 exceptions to whatever rules it lays down? This isn't a theory. This is a sieve that you're waving around in the air. Uh, however, the black hole does bear on this because uh, Imagine an observer standing outside the event horizon of a black hole watching an object approach the black hole. What you see, and this is similar to the argument or the example I gave a few minutes ago of the marble on the edge of the bowl. What you see is this, let's make it a spacecraft, this spacecraft that approaches the event horizon of the black hole and then it's caught. In the, in the gravitational tidal forces of the black hole, and it begins to go faster and faster, around and around, faster and faster, and at a certain point, it disappears into the singularity. This is from the point of view of an observer outside the system. Now we flash to the stalwart captain and crew on the bridge of this starship. What happens to, f from their point of view, what happens is as they sink below the event horizon of the black hole and start the descent toward the singularity, time and space are dilated so dramatically that the singularity recedes to an infinite distance and you fall forever toward it. Well, what I would like to suggest based on, uh, well, here's what I'd like to suggest. This is one way of thinking about it, that our planet is on a collision course with something which we actually, at our present state of knowledge, don't have a word for. A black hole is simply a gravitationally massive object, so massive that no light can leave it. What I'm talking about is something like that, except that uh, it isn't so much gravitationally massive as temporally massive. We are being sucked into the body of eternity. And I think it's going to happen very soon. Now, an obvious objection that someone would make to this, it's a, it's a probabilistic objection, is they would say, don't you find it rather unusual that your own very minute and finite life should occur so close to this moment of universal dramatic climax? Doesn't that clue you to the fact that you might be slightly deluded? To which I reply, not at all. <laughs> because <clears throat> I think of this event horizon as a series of like ghost horizons. And once you enter into history, <clears throat> what history is, is the outer shell of the gravitational field of the attractor of the concrescence. In other words, uh, history is the disturbance in nature which precedes the concrescence. It precedes it by only 50,000 years, a, a, a microsecond. So a geological microsecond 
before all life is melted down in the presence of the singularity, there is a curious interface zone that is not the singularity and not the absence of the singularity. It's the singularity in the act of becoming. And it only lasts, as I say, a geological microsecond.